In this mini video, we're going to dive deeper into the document object model, which is an object oriented representation of an HTML document and serves as an interface between JavaScript and the document itself. We've actually been interacting with the DOM in the last couple of videos by using methods such as getElementById and setting up event handlers. But in this video, we're going to have a look at the tree structure of the DOM for the first time. And then we're going to have a look at how we can add and remove elements. So if you look at any HTML document, such as this one, you will see that it's hierarchical. You have an outermost HTML element, a head and a body element within that, other elements within those, all the way down to some attributes and text. So all the DOM is doing is making this hierarchy explicit in a tree structure. Within this tree, you have some black nodes for the elements, you have some green nodes for the text, and you have some blue nodes for attributes. And so when we call methods like getElementById, what JavaScript is essentially doing is returning nodes from this tree structure. In the example today, what I'd like to do is go further and show you how to add new nodes to this tree structure. In particular, I'd like to build a meal planner where you enter in some meal that you're planning to have, you click the button, and then it's added as an item to an ordered list. I'm gonna start by adding an event handler to the DOM object representing the button, I'm going to have the click event trigger a function called add meal. And as usual, I'm gonna write the special event object to the console to make sure this event is being detected properly. Next, I want to extract the text entered into the input element by using its DOM objects value property. Note that I've declared the variable meal text using the const keyword instead of var or let. What this means is that the variable is scoped to this block and it cannot be reassigned. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the differences between var, const and let in the next physical lecture. Next, I'm going to create a text node in the DOM that stores the value of meal text. And I can do that using the create text node method. And this is what it looks like in the tree structure. Next, I need to create a new list element using the create element method. And this is what it looks like in the DOM. At this point, we need to link the nodes together. So we use the method append child to indicate that the text node is the contents of the list element. If you write the value of new list element to the console, you see that we correctly have an HTML list element containing Nasi Lemak. Finally, we need to append our newly created list element to the OL element. So let's retrieve its DOM object by ID and then use the append child method once again. Great, so now when I enter something into this text input and hit the button, that text appears as a new list element and I can add as many things as I want to that list. What I'd like to do now is add a little more functionality. In particular, I'd like it such that when I click on a list element, it gets deleted. I'm gonna achieve this by attaching an event handler to every newly created list element, such that it calls a function called delete meal whenever it's clicked. Now, to delete a list element, we need to know which list element was actually clicked. And thankfully, in event handlers, JavaScript stores this information for us in a special variable called this. So let's write this to the console to see what's in it. So as you can see, when I click on a few different items in this list, the corresponding HTML correctly appears in the console. So let's move ahead and actually delete the element rather than write it to the console. And we can do this by using the remove method on that element, which is stored in this. So as you can see, when I test it, it's functioning as expected, 
and we can even watch the DOM update in real time by using the Chrome developer tools. So we've essentially finished our meal planner. I just want to finish by showing you something cool. And that's the fact that I don't need to have this separate function definition at the bottom. I can actually just copy and paste it directly as one of the arguments of the event listener method. And finally, because this function doesn't need to be called from anywhere else, I don't even need to give it a name. I can make it anonymous. And that's it for this mini video. We introduced the document object model or DOM and showed how it interfaces between JavaScript and the document. We declared block scoped constant variables using this keyword const. I showed you how to create, append and remove DOM nodes by using these different methods. I showed you how to access the element involved in an event by using the special variable this. And finally, I showed you how we can use anonymous functions in event handlers. See you next time.